Is it correct that J. Edgar Hoover could tell so much about someone from simply a handshake? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, every time that he went to shake people's hands, he was uh, investigating whether they were telling the truth. So if they were not telling the truth, he may notice the temperature in the body was changing and maybe that m there might be some sweat coming out. Uh, he was incredibly sensitive. So when we worked on uh, J. Edgar Hoover with um, Leonardo, he wanted all of that to be there. I mean, he is a perfectionist. So he, he did research on his life, extreme research, but then he wanted to bring it into the physical level. And that's where I came in. I came in to help him get that preciseness. So, um, for example, uh, the way that Leo uh, walks is very somewhat relaxed. And he's kind of an athlete, so, you know, he has an, an athletic gait. But he wanted uh, J. Edgar Hoover that every step he was rooting, <laughs> exactly. He was really grounded. And so we worked on that. We worked on, on his walking, on his sitting. We worked on how he opened doors. We, we walked on how he shook people's hands. And he went to such level that he would wear the costume and the makeup. And then he would have someone sort of do some t tests. And, and, and then check it with me whether it was all convincing. And then also he did, uh, you know, uh, it started from him being in his 20s, going all the way into 60s. So there was, we mapped out the aging process. And as time went on, did, did J. Edgar Hoover fold into himself? Yeah, uh, his health was not good. And so we wanted to get all that elements of health. And he was getting some uh, shots uh, that, you know, to sp uh, that were basically speed for him to do what he was doing. And, uh, and how would that reflect in behavior and movement? And so we got all of that precision and uh, uh, it was fantastic. Really, um, it helps when the actor wants that kind of precision in the body. And then if you looked at Leo as uh, Frank Abagnale, uh, also sort of a light gait and, and, mm -hmm. and quick and things like that, but a different maybe uh, demeanor, you know, because a different side of the law. Um, maybe a little, I don't know if you remember the movie, but just, yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. The, was, did you see the, how the body changed? Has yes, changed? he changes his body, he changes his dialect, he changes his voice. So some, some actors are very much into complete transformation and they do it, they go and do it and it's magnificent. Uh, Meryl Streep is uh, famous for this. Uh, where she transforms herself completely. You don't even, she's unrecognizable. But she does it because there is that kind of immersion and full transformation. Uh, but it does take time. It takes desire. It takes knowledge. Because I think that you really do have to be willing to go that far you know, to, to become a, you know, a different person altogether. But in a truthful way, and, uh, rather than in a, um, just the makeup and just the costume, you know, but really changing what the body is doing. Why do you say that the body is a musical instrument? Because it is. <laughs> it is. Um, our body, well, I'll, I'll compare my body to a cello. Uh, the strings of the cello are really that part of us that uh, vibrates with our life and vibrates with intention, right? So to, in order to, for the cello to 
have that kind of music is that, that they have to be very, very tuned and they have to be, and the whole cello begins to vibrate. So the body, um, the body of the cello, the wooden part, the wooden casing of the cello is our bones. So every bone, including my head, my head, my rib cage, my pelvis, uh, my arms and my legs, uh, we call them sympathetic uh, vibrations because they're connected to, but everything in my body is vibrating, including my back. And that kind of, that kind of use really is very much like a musical instrument. And what do you get in a musical instrument? You get all the pitches, all the rhythms, and guess what? We can have that too. We can have that variation of sound. Uh, singers can do that. Opera singers are magnificent. And some actors, you know. Um, I've always thought that President Obama had a beautiful voice. And, uh, but I think it came from his use. He was quite free in his, you know, great basketball player. <laughs> and you've seen it too in uh, musicians, the, their performances on stage, the front man of a band, Roger Daltrey or uh, Robert Plant, or, you know, the way they move around. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. They're totally free and vibrant. It's very exciting. We have a quote here. Mm -hmm. Actors often spend too much time focusing on making their bodies into hard armor and not enough on discovering an emotional life. I think that's from uh, your uh, TechWorks Facebook page, so the Alexander mm -hmm. TechWorks page, and I'm not sure if this was Christoph who had said that. Yeah, uh, what that means is a lot of actors in Hollywood, they work very hard to uh, get fit and be body beautiful. Right, and if you look, and it's uh, whether they want to do work uh, for Marvel and you know superheroes, or that they they are going to show skin. You know they don't want to be flabby or anything. <laughs> so, uh, and it's women and men, and the problem with that is that if you work out so much, that uh, you have developed an armor in your body. And so it's hard to express. So if, uh, if the character uh, gets depressed, it's harder to uh, allow the depression to come in or the emotions to come in uh, or the vulnerability, you know, that often actors have to open up their windows and doors and, and let the audience in. How do you do that? You know, but if you have all that tension, that presentation, so to speak, because in a way, mus muscles present the person a certain way, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, sometimes it can be kind of fun, but, <laughs> but it's limiting, let's put it that way. It's very limiting. Sure, and it seems like we focus so much on the outer that how could anybody be depressed? As it's as like a mask, a right. very nice mask. Indeed, but then it is possible to have both, you know, that you can still work out, but don't do it so much that you're so stiff, you know, do it to a, a, um, a reasonable amount. Another quote I have, acting is a visceral activity. Mm -hmm. Your body should be infused with energy, breath, and behavior of the character. Yes. Uh, amen. <laughs> See, that was Christoph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. said that, okay. So, what does that mean, visceral? Um, so often, often we are not aware of what's going on inside of us, of ourselves, you know, and, and definitely in our culture, uh, people do not want to reveal what's really going on on the inside. But that the best acting is when we can feel directly from your gut what's going on. And then we believe the, the character, you know. Uh, I'm thinking about Itonia, I Margot Robbie was excellent beyond, beyond good because she allowed that part of her, that anger and that 
uh, abandonment and abuse that she had as a child and in her life. And she let it out so beautifully. But so it is, it is happening in the organs. So yes, we do have to train the body to such degree that we can use our organs and our blood. Often I say to people, um, I, I, I want your blood into this. And they get it. They say, oh God, I didn't even think about my blood. <laughs> but that's, that's what makes a performance um, heightened, brings it up. It really does. So yes, so that's, that's what that means that, you know, we, we learn to see how it opens up the character from the inside out. And why viscera, viscera or visceral? It's because it's, it sustains us and you know, it's, it's the, the hunger right? Or it's the, uh, the pain of the heart. You know, again, it's an organ. It feels it that way. And the, uh, most people have told me that usually when they work this way, it's, it's an adventure for them. Uh, it's kind of terrifying for a lot of them. But the result on screen is unforgettable. You want to give that, that the organs to the character. And, um, and yes, you will feel like you've really done something uh, extraordinary and you will be tired uh, after doing, shooting a movie for 10 weeks this way. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, then uh, you get the recognition that Margot Robbie gets, you know, uh, so, so people notice, definitely. And you said with the character, the Tanya Harding character, mm -hmm. put the anger and, and the abuse, but also became a gazelle when it was, when it was showtime. Right, well, uh, she was not a gazelle, she was actually a pit bull. Oh, she was okay. a pit bull and she was <laughs> <laughs> a wild horse. Um, okay, a stallion of some type. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. When, when uh, I was employed by her, uh, the, uh, the director was complaining that she, uh, she was too light. And, 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 and the, uh, Tonya Harding was more muscular and heavier and more, somewhat more brutal in her approach to skating. And, and, and Margot wasn't getting it. It wasn't happening. So, so that's when I came in and I, 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 and I got her to do some animal work. So I usually tell people to study one or two animals that feel like the character. Why two? Because usually we have two people inside of us. You know, we might be one way at work and then at home we may be completely in a different way. So she picked up two animals and she studied them and she collected photographs. And, and I, I put them through a process of transformation into the animal. So they know how the animal eats, how the animal attacks, how the animal runs, how the animal breathes, right? And then gradually, we begin to bring it to human form. So we may do, you know, 50, 50, 50% 50 horse, 50% human. And then I say, oh, okay, now 75% human, 25% horse. What, what are you going to keep? Maybe it's the way that the horse stops. Maybe it is the way the horse gazes in its environment. Maybe it's a quality in, in the sound of the horse. So, um, but ultimately uh, what you see on screen is just basically maybe 10%, 5% of the animal. But it just gives them so much freedom once they found that heaviness, you know, or that wildness from the animal. It's really, or even the focus of an animal Bless them. That, boy, are they focused on survival. 
much more focused than we are as humans, much more focused.